What is up everybody, Schwazy here, and in today's video, we're gonna be reviewing the 2023 Land Rover Defender 130. This is the longest Defender with three full rows of seats, and in today's video, we're gonna go over the exterior, interior, talk about some of the specifications and tech, then we're gonna get behind the wheel and take it for a drive. And to finish off this video, we're gonna discuss my thoughts on the 130 and whether you should consider this as your next daily driver. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so about the Land Rover Defender. Well, I think most of you probably know this vehicle. This thing came out in 2020 as the next generation of the Defender, but the Defender name goes back quite a bit in history. So the Defender was technically released back in 1983 as the Land Rover 110, but that was technically an evolution of the Land Rover Series 1, 2, and 3 built all the way from 1948 to 1985. Technically, the Defender name didn't start getting used until 19. And it went all the way through 2016 until it was discontinued and then re-released as this 2020 model year. And this has been a very hot vehicle. A lot of people have wanted it. There's been markups. There's been shortages. I mean, I don't need to tell you the whole story. But here we have the 130, which is actually the longer version. This is the longest Defender you can get. And the reason they extended this rear quarter panel to make it look kind of a little bit odd to some people's eyes is because they fit actual functional seats in the back and we're going to talk about that in today's video because they are pretty comfortable but first off i do want to talk about the exterior styling this is a very striking vehicle it has a little bit of retro mixed with some modern i mean it's kind of reminiscent and very similar to the ford bronco which pays homage to the previous generations that came before it same with this here there are some touches all throughout the vehicle that kind of make it similar to the previous generations but giving it a modern twist now in case you're wondering how much longer is this 130 versus the 110 which is the regular four-door version you're talking about 13.4 inches of length and the interesting thing here is that the wheelbase is exactly the same size as the 110 so they simply just added 13.4 inches of space behind the rear wheels and so that really just goes directly towards the cabin now you can get the 110 with a three row but I wouldn't recommend it for anybody who has adults sitting back there whereas this thing is actually functional in the back now in terms of length from bumper to rear wheel you're looking about 211 inches which is is about the same size as a Tahoe, but less than a Suburban and less than an Escalade ESV. Now, as a result of that added length, this vehicle is definitely not light. You're looking at a gross vehicle weight of 5,570 pounds without any cargo inside. Now, starting with the front end styling, you do get these really cool looking LED headlights. They've got a lot of different dimension to them and they look really good at night. You have that round appearance to them. The daytime running light looks really good. Very beautiful and striking front end. This is very familiar, very Land Rover-like. Uh, and then coming over to the center, you have Defender with this metal type of badging all across the front, kind of similar to like a Wrangler or something like that. And then down here, you do have a, it's a fake aluminum, but it does look really good with the fog lights integrated at the bottom with the parking sensors. There aren't any skid plates on this particular first edition model that I have in front of me, uh, but it is a very capable off-roader, and we'll talk about that in today's video as well. I do like this hood. You have this also fake but uh, retro look to the hood. I believe the original Defender had these so you could actually step on the hood and reach onto the roof but this one doesn't have real metal plates it's just an accent piece but it looks really good. Coming over to the side of the vehicle you do have these large 22 inch wheels. Uh, pretty massive they're just simple five spoke they have Defender written on them but they do have a cool metallic flake to them. I don't know if you'll be able to tell on camera but they are a really nice looking wheel very just subtle dude kind of subtle but it matches with the aluminum trim all throughout the side of the vehicle now in case you're wondering about tire size these ones in particular are the 275 45 r22s front and back and this is what comes on the first edition of the land rover defender coming over to the side you do have this what appears to be a fake vent unfortunately although you may be able to open up this back plastic and open it up and get some real venting but i do like defender stamped over here and i think this is real metal or real aluminum so it looks really good it matches the rest of the aluminum which is down here at the bottom runs all across and then around the wheel wells to the back but real quick i do want to talk about this a pillar it is body painted but then you do have some black contrast over here along with the side view mirror housings and then you have black trim all across the window but the 
this is kind of a uh, something that's controversial on this car is you have this panel over here and really it's just a design piece. Uh, it doesn't really serve much more aside from if you do have the ladder accessory for the Defender, it kind of covers this piece. Or if you have like a little storage compartment, it does go over this. But for the most part, this is kind of design piece for the C-pillar. And it's not very noticeable on the inside. It's more noticeable outside. But if you do get the two-door version of the Defender, the Defender 90, uh, this panel really covers up the window. And that's where it becomes a little bit weird. But, you know, the side profile, this is a very boxy vehicle. And, you know, you can see up there, you do have blacked out roof rails. Now, with the all-terrain tires, you can get this vehicle upwards of 370 pounds on the roof. So uh, a very substantial amount of weight for those of you that want to do some type of overlanding. And then in the back, I really like these rear taillights. So uh, it's kind of hard to see on camera, but this black strip has these taillights integrated in the back. And then you have these additional two lights over here. And uh, I believe that's for federal regulation that they have these two, but when they light up at night, they look really good. Uh, I've always noticed this on the Defenders. And then you have your tire cover, of course. Uh, same type of colors with the white and black. Looks good, Defender. And then you do have recovery hooks down here as well. Uh, and uh, actual metal bumper so uh, that's that's nice to see back here and just overall a very handsome looking design from the outside now next up we're going to talk powertrain but i thought this was kind of funny or quirky so you do have the hood latch release over here in the driver's side footwell but when the door is closed you have this little tab that covers this section so that i guess you don't accidentally open the hood latch with your foot or whatever reason. Uh, but it's kind of funny that this closes this off so that you don't open the hood while you're driving. Okay, now under the hood of this particular Defender is the P400 engine as Land Rover calls it. And what that is is it's a three liter inline six turbocharged engine with a mild hybrid system that produces 395 horsepower and 406 pound feet of torque. Now that will make this 5,600 pound vehicle go zero to 60, just about 6.3 seconds. And we'll show you what that looks like when we get behind the wheel. Now all that power is sent through an eight speed ZF automatic transmission. And you do get all wheel drive as standard with a two speed transfer case, a high and a low and a center locker. Now fuel economy, it's not great, but not bad considering the size and weight of this vehicle. You're looking at 17 in the city, 21 on a highway for a combined 19. Now this isn't the only engine option you can get on the Defender 130. Land Rover also offers a detuned version of this exact same three liter turbocharged inline six. And that one only produces about 295 horsepower and 296 pound feet of torque. That one will do zero to 60 in just about seven and a half seconds. Now for all of you V8 enthusiasts for 2024, Land Rover now offers the supercharged V8 engine under the hood of the Defender 130. That was previously reserved for the Defender 90 and the 110, but now you can get it in this largest variant of the Defender. Now, that one produces almost 500 horsepower, and that one will do zero to 60, just about 5.4 seconds. Now, if you're wondering about towing capacity for the Defender 130, it's pretty good. You're looking at about 8,200 pounds. Okay, now let's talk about the interior of the Land Rover Defender. Now, one of the first things you'll notice is this vehicle isn't as cheap as your typical off-roader, but it's also not as luxurious as like a Range Rover. This is kind of an in-between zone. You'll also notice it's a pretty minimalist interior. Now, starting off with the door panel, you do have a soft touch material up top. Below that, I do like that you have this body painted exposed metal that gives it kind of that rugged look. You also have these Torx head screws that screw in this panel. Below that, you do have a soft touch material for your elbow pad. You just have your typical window switch is nothing too fancy and then you do have your 10 speaker 400 watt meridian sound system below that there is a small compartment for a cup holder and then moving inside of the cabin you'll notice there's a little grab handle on the left hand side it's reminiscent of what i have in my ford bronco and some nice use of materials throughout the cabin so you have this nice white colored textured material it is just a hard touch plastic but it has some texture to it i like that you have that on the steering wheel you have it on the back of the dashboard even underneath the center arm console so all throughout the vehicle there's a mix of 
plenty of different materials to keep it kind of fun and exciting. You also have a storage compartment on the left hand side and tons of storage on the passenger side. There's even a pass through behind the infotainment screen where if you could find something that fits back there, great, but it's not very large. It's just kind of cool that you have that minimalist open air type of feel to it. Now the steering wheel, uh, heads up for you, it's a little large. It's a very big steering wheel, but this is a very big car. I do like that the buttons on the steering wheel change depending on what menu you're in. So for example, if you're just in your regular menu, you have your call buttons, you have your seek and track for your audio, but then if you push the menu button, it will change into a bunch of different arrows. On the right hand side is just your typical cruise control functions, which will show off when we get behind the wheel. And then the center, you have this Defender badge and a nice leather padding. That looks really cool. And then moving further up, you have this large 12.3 inch instrument gauge cluster display. Very vivid, lots of different functionality here. So you can swipe through your typical fuel economy, your safety features. Uh, but I do like the fact that you can change the display as well. So if you don't like the two dial traditional setup you can change it to a one dial you can just show off your map so if you're headed to a destination you could do a large 12.3 inch map you can show off your media or you can pick a specific driver assistance layout where it will show you in full screen mode your lanes and the vehicle in front of you moving above this instrument gauge cluster you do have this nice leather piece that extends all the way to the passenger side it has some stitching to it and then above that you have this rubberized durable material it's not a hard touch plastic it's got a little bit of give to it but it's definitely a little bit more kind of rough than your typical uh, luxury vehicle. You do have some air vents up there. And then moving towards the infotainment screen, you have a large 11.4 inch touchscreen. And I gotta say the software is incredibly snappy. There's some really cool things baked in here too. So on the left-hand side, you have your quick access buttons for your navigation, your phone, and your audio. On the right-hand side, you do have a quick access button for your 360 degree camera. I love that you can do a 3D mode where you're essentially floating around the vehicle. Unfortunately, you can't stop it at a specific point it actually just cycles through the different cameras but it is still cool that there is a 3d mode i like the off-road mode as well because it will show you essentially what's going on underneath the vehicle and it uses fancy software so that if you're approaching a rock you can see where that rock is underneath the car as you're passing over it that's really cool and then uh, talking about some of the cool features within this software, you have your climate control where you can control it with not only the buttons below it, but you can control it with the infotainment screen. But you also have an air quality button which will show you the exterior and interior air quality and it can actually purify the air outside. Now there's a couple sets of different off-road buttons. So you can hit the four x four button and it'll tell you exactly how high of water you can drive through depending on what suspension setting you're in. And there's three different suspension settings. There's the high high, the medium, and the low. And it does make a noticeable difference. Also, this has got to be one of the quickest air suspensions I've ever experienced. I mean, with the snap of a finger, this thing will get up to its maximum height. And then with, again, the same snap of that same finger, it will go all the way down to its lowest height with just a matter of seconds. It really is incredible. You also have eight different drive modes with the majority of them being off-road modes and it will regulate the suspension, the throttle response, really, really robust software. And then you have something called low traction launch where if you're stuck in a snowbank, it will give you that extra boost of a little bit of torque to get you out of a sticky situation. I haven't had to use it, but I have seen on forums where people have said it actually works. Now there is another menu called vehicle dimensions and you might find it kind of silly But I do like that this will adjust depending on the height of your suspension So let's say you're pulling into a really low garage Well, you can pull up this vehicle dimensions and you can see that oh I'm only six foot six inches and the garage is seven feet. I can definitely pull in This will also show you your uh, breakover your departure and your approach angle Which is nice if you're going off-roading You also have some Alexa connectivity here and then you can adjust ten different colors for your interior ambient lighting now moving below the infotainment the screen you have your auto start stop button you have your gear selector and then you have pretty much your only set of buttons in the center stack and what I like here is the fact that some of these buttons serve uh, multiple purposes so for example if you're trying to adjust the temperature you just use this little roller knob and it works really easy just like any other vehicle but if you push that roller knob then you can adjust your heated and ventilated seats for the driver side and then the passenger side does the exact same thing there's also a third purpose to this roller if you'll notice to the right of this button there's a little vehicle with an arrow next to it 
Well, if you push that button, then you can use the roller to adjust your eight different drive modes. On the right-hand side, if you push the button right below the vehicle, it's a little fan. That's how you adjust the fan speed. So really cool that you have three different sets of functions for just one button. I like the minimalist design for that. You do also have your buttons to raise and lower your suspension. You have your low gear activation. Every single Defender comes with a two-speed transfer case. You have your climate control settings, and then you have your off-road cruise control. Moving further back, you have this really large center arm console that has some cool tricks to it. So first off, you have some nice wood veneer around the side with those Torx head screws kind of bolting this wood inside of the center console. That's really cool. You have two cup holders and a wireless charging pad that fits the largest phone in the market right now. And then opening up this center arm console, you actually have a refrigerator in here. Uh, now you can shut it off, but it gets really cold. You can actually see frost building up around it. That's how cold it gets inside of the center arm console. So if you're going on a road trip, you can stick some drinks in there. Now this is kind of a two tier center arm console. So below you, you have some nice rubberized material down here so you could fit a slightly larger purse, uh, maybe your wallet. And then you do have two USB ports and a 12 volt power outlet there as well. Now real quick, moving up, you do have a rear view camera mirror, which is nice because you have three rows of seats. And then you do have a sunshade auto open and close and your sunroof that does open. Now one complaint I do have is the sunroof doesn't really open that far, even though the bar for the sunroof is located pretty far back there. It's almost right above the heads of the rear passenger seats. Now moving into the second row, you have the same nice use of materials on the door panel, soft touch at the top, and then again, a little bit more of that exposed exterior color. And then you do have a little storage compartment, mainly for a water bottle down below. You also do have a center armrest with two cup holders. And I gotta say the seats are incredibly comfortable. They're almost softer than the first row seats for some reason. Uh, they're very tall, very wide. You could easily fit three people right across. There's not much of a center hump. Now the leg room in the second row is about 38.4 inches, which is pretty decent. And there's plenty of space back there to fit three adults. And then you do have your rear climate control settings as well. You have dual zone climate for the back and you have heated and ventilated seats for the second row as well. That's not very common that you find that. And I do like the fact that you can fold the second and even the third row seats independently of each other. So a lot of vehicles, you have to fold down the passenger side with the center seat. Whereas here, you can fold down every one of those seats however way you want. So that way, if you're carrying maybe six passengers, but you have some long skis, you can fold down just the center seats and have the skis go all the way to the front. So I like that. I wish more cars had that as an option. Now, climbing into the third row, because this vehicle does have functional third row seats, it's not as easy to do as some other three row crossover. So pulling on the tab on the second row seat will slide the seat forward and that's perfectly fine. It actually works really well. But the entrance into that third row is not very wide. So it kind of takes a little bit of gymnastics to get yourself inside of that third row seat. But once you get back there, it's gotta be one of the most comfortable third row seats I've sat in. You're looking at about just around 31 inches of leg room. And as an adult, I could actually sit back there. The other thing I really like, and this is something I have not seen in any other three row crossover I've reviewed to date. That is the fact that you have a soft touch armrest for the third row passengers. I never get why even minivans I've reviewed have hard touch plastics back there, but this vehicle has soft touch material so that the third row passengers can sit there and actually have a soft touch padding for their elbow. I love the fact that they have that. And you've got third row heated seats back there as well. You also have air vents back there. So you have your climate controls, which are regulated by the same climate controls as the second row. And above you, you have your own personal sunroof. Now it doesn't open, unfortunately, but you still have that open air feeling in the third row. You also have some netting back there so you could place your phone and that way they don't just bounce around. One complaint I do have back there is you're essentially sitting over the top of the wheel well. And so because of that, on the driver and passenger side, if you're sitting at the very edges, your feet are kind of touching this wheel well. The wheel well just kind of protrudes inside of the leg room. And so if you're fitting three people back there, it could get kind of tough because you're gonna be fighting for some foot space. Not necessarily leg room, but where to place your feet. Cause you can't really put your foot on top of the wheel well cause there's just not enough space there. So 
that's something that's a little bit awkward but if you have some smaller kids back there they're going to be perfectly fine one thing i didn't see back there which i think land rover does offer but i personally couldn't find is third row usb ports i don't see any back there let me know in the comments below if your land rover defender 130 has usb ports in the third row now the last part i want to talk about is the trunk space you do have the door that opens to the right because you have the wheel attached to it so even though your keys have an automatic trunk release you don't have any type of automatic trunk opening on the Defender. Now in the back, there's not that much space back there. I think Land Rover says about 15 cubic feet, which is smaller than most three row midsize crossovers. The nice part is you have some cool features back there, like a hook to hang some groceries on the driver and passenger side. You also have a removable to no cover to cover up that small section that you can simply hide in the door pocket of the rear door. You do have a 12 volt power outlet back there and you have a set of buttons to be able to raise and lower the rear suspension. Now this becomes handy when let's say you've been off-roading but then you go to a grocery store and you want to load some stuff in the back. Well instead of having to raise it over a pretty high vehicle height you can lower the suspension to its lowest settings and load everything back there and then raise the vehicle back up to go back off Roading. And then underneath the floor, you have your typical jack, not much in storage to be able to store stuff back there. Of course, you have a full size spare hanging on the trunk door. The last thing to mention about the third row seats is they aren't automatic fold down. You have to manually fold them down by pulling on the tether. But since the trunk is so small, it's very easy to access that third row. Unfortunately, you don't have a flat loading floor because the seats are a little bit more comfortable in the third row. They don't give you that knee to the chest type of feeling. They're a little bit more angled. And as a result of that, you don't have a perfectly flat loading floor for the second or third row. Okay, so you may be wondering, well, this is the first edition of the 130. So what do you get as the base trim level? Well, let's talk about that. Well, under the hood, you will only get the detuned P300 in line six that produces about 300 horsepower, but you do get all wheel drive as standard with that center locker and the two-speed transfer case. You also get the adjustable air ride suspension system as standard on the 130. And it works really quick. Next, you do get three rows as standard, which honestly makes sense since that's the only reason to get the 130. You also get this beautiful panoramic sunroof and a sunroof for the third row. These LED taillights and LED headlights that also have auto high beam functionality. You'll get push button start and keyless entry as standard along with your hill descent cruise control. You'll also get a heated steering wheel, power heated seats, you also get rain sensing wipers and this 10 speaker Meridian sound system. Every Defender 110 comes with this 12.3 inch all digital instrument gauge cluster display along with the updated curved 11.4 inch touchscreen with wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. You also get a standard wireless charging pad. Every 130 will come with a 360 degree camera. In terms of safety tech, you get blind spot monitoring, adaptive cruise control, and lane keep assist. In the back, you'll get a third zone of climate control settings. So as you can see, the base Defender, which is called the S-Trim, already comes packed with a lot of features, but if you wanna change up a little bit of the styling or maybe get some better wheels, you can upgrade to the Defender X Dynamic SE. That will give you 20 inch wheels instead of the 19s on the S, and you'll get ventilated front seats. Now, if you want the rear view camera mirror, different color options for the interior, and a heads up display, which oddly enough, my first edition doesn't come with, then you're gonna to have to upgrade to the Defender X trim. Now, for those of you wanting to overland your Defender, Fender. For 2024, there's a new trim level called the Outbound Edition, which replaces that third row of seats with just a larger cargo area. Your rear windows are actually replaced with a panel, and that one's meant for overlanding, and there's more latch points inside and more rugged interior. For those of you that are interested in that and don't need three rows of seats. Now, if you're willing to pay the price, the last trim level is the Defender V8, which is also, like I said earlier, new for 2024. That one has more leather touch surfaces 
boxes inside. You've got suede, you've got a head-up display, and an upgraded Meridian 14-speaker audio system, and of course, the biggest part being the V8 underneath the hood. All right, now let's talk about the pricing of all of the different trim levels. Now, the Defender S, which is the base trim level of the 130, starts at $69,100. Now, just so you're aware, the three-row version is anywhere from $8,500 to $9,200 bucks more than the 110 variant of the exact same trim. Now, that may seem like a pretty large leap over the S trim level of the Defender 110, but keep in mind, some of the features that come as standard on this vehicle do not come as standard on the S trim of the 110. So not only do you get an extra 13.4 inches of space and a comfortable third row, but you also get more standard amenities inside. And so I know that price jump may seem dramatic for just an extra row of seats, but it's not just an extra row. Now, if you want the S trim, but with this upgraded 400 horsepower engine, you're looking at a starting price of around 77,100. Now you can get this vehicle fully equipped with the 130 and the V8 for over $116,000. But if you're looking for a three row supercharged V8, this is one of the few vehicles on the market. All right, now let's get behind the wheel and see what the Defender 130 drives like. Real quick, I do wanna show you the Land Rover key. This is kind of your typical key. You have your headlight button. I think that's just to turn on the headlights if you wanna find it at night, you have your panic button. And then you do have a button to open up your lift gate but there is no lift gate to open. So it's kind of just a dead button because they have to use it on other Land Rover products. Now turning this vehicle on. It's got a pretty good engine start sound to it. You may have heard in the exhaust clip but it's not bad, considering this is only an inline three liter uh, six cylinder engine, it sounds pretty good. This has the you know, electric boost mild hybrid system, and so it's a pretty complicated powertrain, but it does sound pretty good. I like that they didn't keep it muted like the Mercedes GLE I reviewed where the electric hybrid system kind of makes it a little bit quieter and not as good of a cold start. This thing actually has a pretty decent one. And now you may be wondering, with this one being the Defender 130, it's the longer version, the longest Defender you can get, does it feel long when you're driving it? Well, uh, I'll be honest, I have never driven the Defender 110, so I can't give you an exact answer as to whether this feels much longer, but Driving this vehicle, this actually doesn't feel like a long three row crossover. Like I've driven some crossovers, I've reviewed some minivans that were pretty long. This doesn't feel like that. And I think part of that reason is because the wheelbase of this vehicle is exactly the same as the 110. They just added an extra 13, 14 inches of space behind that rear wheel. And so you almost don't feel it unless you're you know, going around a corner and you know, you're worried about hitting that rear end. But for the most part, it's very maneuverable. It's pretty easy to park, especially with that 360 camera. What I will say is I can tell the weight of this vehicle. This is a heavy vehicle. Uh, it's, it's just heavy. There's no way to hide that. I mean, the way this thing drives, it feels like a substantial car. It honestly feels a little bit more heavier or more substantial than other three row crossovers I've reviewed. It kind of just has that driving dynamics uh, to it. And I think that's part of its nature. That's why you have this large greenhouse where your windows are really large. Uh, you have a really commanding view of the front. It doesn't drive like most just regular crossovers I've reviewed. Now in terms of ride quality, uh, you know, this one right now is at its highest setting. And I can't say I notice a huge difference in how comfortable or soft it is on the road in the different suspension settings, but it's plenty comfortable. And I gotta say, for being an off-roader, riding on 22-inch wheels, this is probably one of the more comfortable off-road vehicles, if not the most comfortable, because this is way softer than the Ford Bronco I own, than a Jeep Wrangler. I mean, those just bounce you around. Here we just drove over some train tracks. You know, you barely feel it, you hear it a little bit, but it's not something that jars you. Whereas in my Bronco, I'm bouncing around driving on these train tracks. In terms of acceleration, I'm honestly really impressed with the acceleration of this three liter engine. Now keep in mind, this is the P400. And the reason they call it the P400 is I assume because it has almost 400 horsepower. So this is the mid-grade engine right now for the Defender 130. Let's do a little acceleration here. You know, 
Uh, I gotta say, you don't need the V8. Or I'm gonna lie, uh, you always need a V8. I'm glad the V8 exists. I'm glad they've added that as an option now for 2024. But this is a plenty fine engine. I mean, it's definitely quick enough to get you going. Very good acceleration. You know, in terms of passing power, I was trying to pass this vehicle the other day, had my foot all the way to the floor. Uh, and it's fine, right? It's not super quick in terms of freeway passing power. But when you're talking zero to 60, and you know city driving this thing is plenty quick uh, uh definitely a really good engine i don't know if the smaller engine is enough power for a vehicle of this size i haven't driven it but i think it needs that approximately 400 horsepower to move this substantial amount of weight now one thing i do find is the road noise is a little bit louder than a typical luxury vehicle uh, i can hear a little bit more of what's going on around me it's definitely nowhere near the soft top bronco i have but it's not as nice as like a Mercedes that I've driven in. Again, this comes at a slightly lower price tag and this is more of an off-road oriented SUV. Now, I briefly wanna talk about the safety features. Uh, you do have adaptive cruise control, you do have emergency braking, you have blind spot monitoring, of course, but I'm a little disappointed with the fact that this vehicle doesn't have any type of lane centering. Now, you do have a lane keep assist, which will push you back into the lane and kind of guide you but it won't keep you centered in the lane the entire time. This isn't like, you know, some of the software I've tested in even the Kia Telluride or the Mercedes GLE where, you know, that thing you essentially just have to keep your hands on the steering wheel and the car will drive itself. This one, you have to actually drive the car and then if you happen to be veering off a little bit, this car will alert you and it'll try to steer you out of the way, but it won't keep you centered down the lane. That's something I wish this vehicle had even though personally I probably wouldn't use it because I kind of like to keep my own control of the car. But if you're the type of person that does a lot of highway miles, you know, they just don't have that option of the Defender. And I'm a little disappointed that they don't offer it. Let's do another little acceleration here. I mean, it takes a little bit of effort for this thing to go from 70 to 80, but I do like the sound of the engine. It sounds almost kind of like an infinity in a way. It's a really good sounding engine. And I really like the seating position of this car as well. Like I noted to earlier, you have this commanding view of the road and just the way these seats sit make you feel like you're the king of the world driving in your Defender. It's just a really nice interior to drive in. Makes you feel really confident behind the wheel. Now, as we're about to approach this curve uh, going around the bend, I will say this vehicle definitely feels tall. This doesn't feel like a low slung sports car. This feels like I feel in my Bronco when I'm taking a corner. It's not one that you want to take at high speeds because you're worried it might flip over. And you kind of expect that because this is an off-roader. Now to sum it up, uh, one of the things I want to talk about is the fact that I've really enjoyed driving this car over the past week. Like I haven't gotten it out of my system. I've kept wanting to come back and make random trips to the grocery store because it's a very fun car to drive. And I can't quite put my finger as to why I enjoy it so much. I mean, it's not the most powerful by any means. It's not the quietest, it's not the softest, but it's just a fun vehicle to drive. Uh, I honestly just feel cool driving it. And I totally get why people going head over heels crazy about this vehicle. It just has a personality to it that some other vehicles just don't have. I'll also say the fact is I own a Ford Bronco and I really, really like that car. And this feels like a Ford Bronco that's just luxurious. Even though this isn't as capable as a Ford Bronco, especially riding on 22 inch wheels, it still has that ruggedness and that off-road capability that you get in the Bronco, but then you have the technology and the leather surfaces and all the features that you get from a luxury car. I think that's why I like it so much and I've really enjoyed driving it. Okay, now let's talk about reliability and warranty. US News rates this vehicle 80 out of 100 in terms of reliability. That's based off of JD Power and that's about average in terms of their scale, which is similar to some of the other German competitors in this market. Now, in terms of warranty, Land Rover does offer a four-year, 50,000 mile limited warranty which is bumper to bumper and a six-year unlimited mileage rust perforation warranty so if you have any rust damage well Land Rover will replace that or fix it within six years of ownership now in terms of resale value this is kind of an anomaly in terms of Land Rover and Range Rovers because the resale value of this vehicle has been really good now part of that reason has to do with what's been going on the last few years but in general this has been such a high in-demand vehicle it's an off-roader it's 
somewhat more affordable than like a G-Wagon or some of the other really high-end luxury vehicles. And so this kind of hit the sweet spot. So your resale value is actually pretty good. And I don't think you're gonna lose much within the first one to three years of ownership. Okay, so to finish off this video, what are my overall thoughts on the Land Rover Defender? Well, it's kind of in a class of its own, to be honest. I mean, this competes with the Ford Bronco and the Jeep Wrangler, but at the same time, it's a little bit more expensive and it's a little bit nicer inside. At the same time, it also competes with like a BMW X5 or a Mercedes GLE, but it's more capable off-road. At the same time, it doesn't compete against the G-Wagon because that one is definitely more capable, but also way more expensive. So this one kind of hits the sweet spot with being rugged and kind of adventurous on the outside, but also luxurious on the inside. I think that's why this vehicle has done so well. There's just really not a big competitor in the same price point and same class level as this, aside from maybe something else in Land Rover or Range Rover's lineup. So if you're looking for a really capable off-roader, but you need three rows of functional seats, there's really nothing else like it in the segment. The Defender 130 is definitely a really good choice. You got really good resale value, a pretty good warranty, and this thing just looks good and it turns heads. So you really can't go wrong with the 130. But let me know what you guys think about the 130 down in the comments below. Now, if you did enjoy today's video, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for all of the weekly car videos. Also check me out on all the social media at Schwazy underscore. As always, everybody, I hope you stay Schwazy, stay healthy, have a wonderful day.